Okay. I try to get Charles to do this, Mr. Wheaton. I said, you can just go up here. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bible Teaching and Seminars. Today's topic is the fruit of the Spirit. Our speaker today is Mr. Donald Williams. He is the president of Speakers for All Occasions. He is the father of two beautiful girls and a grandpa. <laughs> and also, Mr. Williams is a good friend and volunteer of the public library. Today, I welcome you and invite you to put your hands together for Mr. Donald Williams. Thank you, Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bible Seminars. And our topic today is the fruit of the Spirit. And we're coming out of Galatians uh, 5, 22 to 26, and then chapter 6, 1 through 10. Let me start off by reading uh, 522. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires the 20 if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit 26 let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another and here Paul is talking about the fruits of the spirit and Paul was writing to the Gentiles. He was saying that no longer do you have to become, uh, practice the law of Judaism, practice the laws of Jews in order to become a Christian. Not since Christ Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And so he was trying to explain to the Gentiles that religion has progressed to a point where Christ, when Christ came, everything changed. And that's where we are today. I'm here to relate to you that everything is still changing. Now, the judgment of Jesus Christ lies within us. And we no longer are uh, victims of the law. But we we'll now belong to the spirit of Christ. And so when we look at the, when we look at the fruit of the spirit, we're looking at, Attitude, we're looking at how we relate to others, and we're also looking at trust in God. Now, the fruit of the Spirit, we all want to know, is love, joy, and peace. Everybody's familiar with that. And how we relate to others, or with patience, Relate in terms of trust, relate in terms of faithfulness, gentleness, self control. If I were to ask you, thought was the most important, what would you say? Somebody. Not everybody at the same time, but somebody. Oh, I'd have to lay your trust. Oh. No, I'm talking about the, one of the fruits of the Spirit. The, was it love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control? Which one do you think would be more important? If I had to break it down as one, or? well, just if you had to choose one, I'll say faithful. You say faithfulness is God. That's true. That's 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 very general in nature, and that's important. But I would say that the most important one would be self-control. 
Because if you ever lose control, then you will lose the joy that comes with knowing with Jesus Christ. See, once Christ died for our sins, then he left us his spirit. And that's what we're trying to embrace today. We're trying to embrace Christ's spirit in terms of the Holy Spirit. Because we're no longer uh, under the law, but we're under grace. And so that's why I say self-control. If, if the people of the world can get you to lose your character or lose your control at any time, then these mean nothing. But when you have the spirit of Christ, then you have love, you have joy, you have peace, you have patience, kindness, goodness, you have faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And, and that's why, it, you know, I believe that he put self-control last. Because without self-control, then you would lose. And, I, and there are times when you do lose your peace and your joy. You know what I'm saying? But see, you don't ever want to think that just because you at that breaking point that it's, everything is lost. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is so very important to the anointing of Christ. Knowing Christ. The Spirit of Christ. I'm not going to let you take my joy. You see, when you get in an argument with somebody, when you the cashier is not treating you right, and you're going through the line and it says uh, put, put the stuff in the bag put the stuff in the bag over and over again. You say, what's wrong with this thing? One of those automatic tellers. Mm -hmm. And you, you want to lose your patience. You ever been in one of the Mark stores and around Christmas time and the line is yeah, around the corner. Mm -hmm. But you want that deal. So you, you, you have the patience. You have the patience. Then when it comes to kindness and goodness, you, you just want to be kind and good to everybody. Because you have that spirit of Christ. And we're talking more about that. And then it says, uh, number... 26. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So that's what I was talking about. Let me relate a scripture to you because some people, somebody might not know exactly what the spirit is. Let's turn to Romans uh, 5 15 3. Romans 15, 3, and it says, uh, For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproach of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instructions, that through endurance, through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God endure and encourage grant you to live with, in such harmony with one another. So here he was talking about the scriptures themselves uh, does not uh, justify uh, just believing in the scriptures, but you also have to believe in Christ. But here in Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of all hope fill you with all joy, peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So here we're talking about God filling you with joy and peace. And believing that power of the Holy Spirit. That's why if you need the Holy Spirit in order to carry out the other characters of Christ. And that's, that's so important. And then let's go on here it says... But whoever doubt, now let's go back to uh, Galatians. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. The Spirit, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, angering one another. So if we live by the Spirit, meaning that, we are no longer, we are, we are no longer under sin, but we are living by the Spirit of Christ. And it says, let us walk by the Spirit, meaning that we are walking by the Spirit of Christ. We know
know that our sins have been forgiven. And so we want to keep that relationship with Christ intact. Let's look at uh, 6, chapter 6, 1 through 10. It says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too become tempted. So here they are talking about, if any one of us, if anyone is caught in transgression, meaning that they have sinned. And a lot of times, you know, we uh, run across people that uh, confide in us, and we want to put our arms around them and, and offer them some good advice. But a lot of times they just want a listening ear. And by listening, you can, you can hear their hurt and pain. And so we have to be careful not to fall uh, pretty much in the same trap they may have fallen out of, fallen into. So let's look at number two. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Number three, for if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. For but let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. So here they were talking about uh, to bear one another's burdens. That's what we're trying to do when we listening to people and we uh, counsel people, talk to others, talk to our friends, our family, our neighbors, and. We want to listen more so than give our testimony of Christ. And also, you also, if you find yourself cannot witness to that person, then you want to invite him to church. Let him meet some of those that uh, you fellowship with. And you let the preacher tell about how good God really is through Jesus Christ. But more so than, more so than ever, they can see that goodness in you. And let's say, number five, for each will have to bear his own load. So that's the problem. We, a lot of times, we won't bear our own load. Let's say we have starting, we start there, and we let the world take us down. And that's not good. But see, when we bear our own load in Christ Jesus, this is where Christ wants us. Eternal life is the answer. See, the world wants you to follow with the world. But Christ, if you keep your eye on the cross, and learn the fruit of the Spirit, learn what the anointing really is, then you can only end up with eternal life. Let me read your scripture here for yourself. Eternal life. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For wherever one sows, 
that you will also reap. I have also talked about this at one time or another, about how we can reap, how we can sow to the flesh, which reaps corruption. The same thing I was talking about, about the world. That's, it, it, it leads to corruption. But when we sow to the spirit, it leads to life, eternal life. And, and see, a lot of times, you have to have that spiritual connection with God in terms of the fruit of the Spirit. Now, what is the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is our actions after we have uh, taken on some of the world's burdens. It's our actions. You've heard of, of the phrase, the fruit that not fall forth from the tree. That, that not necessarily true if you know Christ. Now, if you don't, then you're going to emulate those around you. And that means it doesn't fall far, far from the tree. But when you know Christ, you want to keep that spiritual relationship with God. Here we, let's look at So then, number 10, number 9, and let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season we will reap we, if we do not give up. So here they were talking about by maintaining a spirit of Christ, keeping the fruits of our character of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You will reap the blessing of God in due time. You, in, in order to reap that blessing, I think I talked about this one, one time before. You, you have to know that you are in the, always in the presence of God. And see, God doesn't stand up here and talk to you now. Do this, do that. Do this, do that. Do this. No, he doesn't talk to you. It doesn't happen that way. It happens in a flash like that. He, he, only, it, it, he only talks to you in a second. You, won't have, you only have a second to make a judgment call. That you're going to stay there and do it, or you're going to leave. You're going to excuse us. Excuse me for one second. I have something to do. You know, you have to learn how to excuse yourself. Make an excuse. But you're trying to get yourself out of that situation. You only have a second. A second to make that decision. Number 10. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So here they're saying, as we have opportunity, you won't get the opportunity if you're not in the household of faith. You won't get the opportunity to exercise these gifts the way you should exercise them. Because the real test of the world starts once you walk out that door, once that parking lot is full, once somebody cut in front of you, once somebody uh, bless you out, how you, what, what, are, what are the results? You have to enhance these in fellowship for yourself, in your employment for yourself, in your relationships for yourself. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And I thank you so much for coming today. Um, let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today.